So in the third peg, education, individualized learning to learn. And again, I want to come back to individualized learning to learn as a phrase that a lot of people are picking up on. We say learning to learn all the time now, and we say individualized education. And yet, we're still talking about quantum statistics. We're still talking about what, uh, what as we measure things, well, we realize that so and so is a style such and such, right? We're, there's a type 2 over here. But the problem is there may be a type 2 for a microsecond and switch to a type 4 in, a, in two seconds later. So we can't say, well, you're going to be, we're going to treat you like a type 2 until six months from now, then we'll reevaluate you. That's, <laughs> and, we're, and we're headed towards that in some respects. So individualized learning to learn, but again, I mean by that something entirely different. I mean, ultimately, if you looked at the ine inevitably where education needs to move to, it needs to move to a point where that the learner, in the act of this learning process, right on the edge of what we're talking about, when they enter a, a ground which is initially challenging, but is inevitably frustrating if they don't get through that window, it's right there that all the tools, all of the that education needs to come in and operate in terms of its resources to allow them to transform what's before them into an opportunity for them to learn. And that means transform the vocabulary, that means transform the conceptual pace, that means transform the particular way its sensory, its sensory bias is, is, is happening. All of those things are all tactical. It's like uh, it, media is not the issue. It's not multimedia. It's what's situationally relevant to the living, present nervous system of who's learning. So if we take the um, three pegs I've been talking about, the, what's going on in business, what's going on in, in psychology, uh, individual well-being, and education, and kind of bring them together to a new peg, what Part of what they really indicate is we're making a, a very profound shift in our society now from knowers to learners. And again, this is another language that's out there in the world, and people say all the time, yes, you know, there's a difference between knowers and learners, and we know what that is. Um, I mean by oh, oops. As I hit my prompt, I'm reminded of a story I need to tell. Um, the most frightening experience I've ever had in all of the, all of the time I've been interested in this, in this work that I'm doing was, was being in a room with was eight or nine, three and four-year-olds while they were playing. And I, was, and I used to do this a lot while they were playing various things. And just, just watch, try to be quiet and visible and, and watch what they were doing. And on this particular occasion, what I noticed was that when kids would come up, when the kids would come up to each other and say, and, and try to communicate with one another, right, try to tell one another what they were doing, what they were excited about, something about this toy, the way that the children would habitually respond to not wanting to be with that other kid at this point was to say, I know. I know was a way of, of pushing each other off. I know. It's closed. <laughs> right? It's so pervasive. I mean, our whole society, the, the little kids, long before they even get to school, are filled with this, I know. It's a knee-jerk reaction. I know. And yet, when you think about it, I know is a disinvitation to learn. It says, I know. It's over. <laughs> it's finished. And so it was just, it was very scary to see these little kids that early pick this up and almost like invisible hands push each other away from engaging with one another by this term, I know. And it pervades our structure, the way that our whole society functions. The other side of this is it is, it is so-ness, right? I mean, if you read a book uh, on whatever the material may be, the the tone that radiates through it is, that's the way it is. It is so, absolutely. And yet, all of us, when we take any time to reflect on it, realize that nothing's that it is so. And yet, all the textbooks, 
all of the materials, the very tones with which, I mean, right now, I got it, right? It, it's pervasive. And it is so as another one of these disinvitations to learn. We don't need to learn together. That's the way that is. Right? So these things pervade society. They pervade the way that classrooms functions. Uh, uh, all of our tones tend to happen the way that books are written. And they're antithetical to learning. They're antithetical to, to maintaining the kind of provisionality and openness that calls forth a learning response and who we're relating to. So this is one of the things that, that as we shift from knowers to learners, we need to move from I know to I'm learning. And not like it's some um, just, it's some sorry, it's uh, something that's um, demeaning or second order, that that I'm learning starts to have the kind of value that I know used to have. <laughs> that in order to do that in a way that's actually real for the individual that's learning, the whole education system has to move towards responding to the moment-to-moment -moment fluctuations of the individual's learning needs, or what we call meaning needs. Because, I mean, if we're not doing that, how is it that, what is it that we are doing? I mean, what we're saying in many different ways, and, and, I, and I'm going to get to this, this is what I mean by the insidious curriculum, <laughs> that, well, let's, let me use the model. If we looked at the K-12 curriculum, actually we could go much shorter to K-6, for example, and said that during that period of time, there is a, a series of, of subject materials that, we're, that we intentionally want to bring about learning on and that these represent windows in this corridor, intentional windows and doors that we designed into this corridor, then the question for me is, the question I want us to address is, what's the relationship of the learner to the walls of the corridor, to the nature, to the background nature of that corridor? And, and this is the dangerous part. This is the part that we really need to get into because what I think that is happening is from the time somebody's in kindergarten and gets to the fifth or sixth grade, they're, they've been placed into an environment where on a daily basis hundreds if not thousands of micro and major uncertainties and curiosities are being evoked in them. Right? They're, they're made to be uncertain and curious many, many times during the course of the day. And at the same time because, not because of anybody's intentions, not because education is a bad system or there's bad teachers. I mean, that's all on the side. I'm not trying to get into that at all. But simply because the circumstances of the structure of classrooms and the structure of information and the, and the ways that the system works, the system itself is circumstantially unresponsive. So what's being learned here is what I want to get at. That over that six-year period of time, would say thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of experience are happening of this learner having this meaning need pop up and having to shut it down because there's nothing to do with it. So what's being learned? The fundamental lesson of education in the world today is your learning needs are irrelevant to learning. And we're not going to have learners that until we get past that one. Because there's nothing more relevant to how an individual learns than how they differentiate, learn to trust, and follow through with their own meaning needs, their own learning needs. I mean, if they can't do that, who's learning? Um, 